it did prompt me to make a Facebook post, an Instagram post, saying essentially, I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do with my body, and anybody who got any problems with it, get your life together. I decided to post it on social media, on Facebook, and beyond like my my very close family like i told them like my mama and i don't know like maybe my maybe my siblings i don't remember if i told them or not but i feel um, like mama told us yeah like my being on maxine having surgery i'm like oh really yeah. but i decided to make a post basically explaining that i was getting the surgery and a somewhat insight into why um because describing like some of the internal struggles that I have had regarding my weight like my almost my entire life and that's where it was overwhelmingly a positive response I think that post got like 200 plus likes and people were overwhelmingly positive but that is where that one family member contacted me from that post. oh from the post yeah and then you have to do another post of if FYI. If, any, if anybody have an issue, it is yeah. what it is. I guess this is yeah. happening. Yeah, I don't feel like I wouldn't put it on Facebook until afterwards. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so for me, I wanted to kind of like... I wanted to kind of take the mystery out of it for people who was considering it. Mm. And so I wanted to document a little bit of the journey as when I was ready to and so once I had my surgery date then I then I was ready to announce it that this is going to happen and um you know just to kind of be informative to other people who were considering it and to alert people to the changes that they was about to see so that I wouldn't get because I feel like a lot of it because one day she was like first off Maxine has always been a pop in plus size queen beauty you know but you know when, when she started Belly shirts and all girl when she started shedding she started becoming yeah because like the weight comes off fast and i also wanted to do that because i didn't want to filter through the you know when people when you lose weight people automatically comment and they might even ask questions like, like what, what are you happened? doing like, yeah. yeah oh my gosh i need to do that and i just wanted to advert all of that and just mm -hmm. say yo i'm getting a surgery so when you see this change, you gonna know this where it came from. Mm -hmm. Instead of, cause I didn't really feel like talking. I wanted to say it and be done with it, not like having to keep. Having I didn't want any secrecy, cause some people feel shame about having it, and mm -mm. I just didn't want. I was like owning. I wanted to own it and just not it be. And I get it. Like I get why some people won't share that they had it. I completely understand because people's reactions are ridiculous. And you know it. And my mouth is ridiculous. So if they got something to say, I'm ready to come back. And some people just don't want to deal with that. Plus, it no. used to be very stigmatized. Well, yes. more stigmatized then. than it is now. I feel like there is still six stigma to it. It's crazy that they've been doing this surgery for, what, 15? No, like 30 years. 30 years? And yeah. now it's, it's becoming a constant where people are not getting shamed for it, which is crazy. Which, when I was joining the group that Max was talking about, you seen people that have the years 15 years back 10 years back and they've still been able to keep the weight off mm -hmm. still been able to live um a healthy lifestyle and then give you know their people it's some people that never like they lost hundreds of pounds never mm -hmm. had skin removal surgery because that wasn't their primary concern mm -hmm. there were so many other things that factor in why they got the surgery and they was just grateful to be able to do things that they couldn't do before what was the first thing that you done that you didn't do before and get like you was kind of like oh i've never done i've never like i feel like for me that is going i, I have not been to six flags in all for 10 plus years because i've been so after i couldn't get on the ride once it was like i'm not coming back here like what's the point but i used to like riding rides so i haven't rode a ride in 10 well 11 years because i, I just can't fit on it so i feel like i'm gonna get on the ride <laughs> I want to ride a bicycle. <laughs> Y'all got a whole little list a of things I want to do. Okay. Yeah, it's life changing. So, two things. One, I'm back to like our previous conversation. I do want to just say that the, the surgery has advanced like over time. Like, basically, it took them 
a while to perfect it. And so people who had it, uh, the, 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 uh, the efficacy of the surgery and the various versions of it has greatly improved over time. 30 years ago, it was something totally different. And it's been people who have had to have a surgery redone because back then, revisions, revisions like it, it wasn't as advanced and, and perfected as it is now. So very few people have to have changes done or, or revisions done now compared to back then. I mean, it was a new procedure that they were just getting started. And so it was possibility of, of things not going how they were supposed to go because it was new with anything. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there. But one of the very first things that I like made a post about in terms of in terms of like something that I could do that I couldn't do before or have been a long time since I was able to do is being on an airplane and buckling the seatbelt and having slack like Ooh, I, I think at one point not I couldn't an leave extender. a buckle. I, <laughs> Give me an extender. I, I never got an extender. Oh, I just, girl, I'll I, be the first one. Can I get an extender? I just, I, I just didn't, I didn't even buckle. Like I was just hiding and kind of just. She's like, gonna die. I mean, I, if, we, if I was gonna die on a plane anyway, I was gonna die. Like, be flopping I, I mean, it was just gonna happen. But Ooh. no, I, I never asked for an extender because I was too embarrassed. No. And so that's. I feel like, yeah, the first yeah. time that you have to ask for an extender, there is an initial, like, shame because people are looking like, what is she getting? After I found out <laughs> it was a whole new word of comfortableness, I would, when I first get on a plane, I say, excuse me, ma'am, I would need an extender. And they ask, if they didn't have it, they're like, I'll come find you. So they gonna know who you are and come find you. Okay. You do it, but I can, I didn't even know it wasn't even an option until Monet told me. And I'm like, you can get something to make it more comfortable because I would have to do, like, Uncomfortable. Oh, I was not being uncomfortable. I just did buckling. I was not about to be uncomfortable. No. 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 So yeah. I, so I yeah. I, I, when that. I when I snapped it and had slack. Oh no! It wasn't just the seatbelt. It was the table tray in oh, front. Oh, I have never had a table when tray. When I down. had the table tray down, I was I literally took a picture and posted. It was like this is happening. This <laughs> is happening right now. So that was one thing. But I think maybe even before that, the thing. The one, the thing that was really like, oh my gosh, like a, a pivotal moment was being able to chase after my kids in the park and like run up the slide behind them, like not get on the slide and run up the slide. Uh -huh. And I just remember that as like a really powerful moment because I was not able to run around with the kids before. Like that was not girl by, uh -uh. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Well, you have to bring somebody with you to the party so they can be interactive. Or, like, yeah, or they go just run around by themselves and I'm away. Which, I mean, now I still sit and let them play, but not having, like, not having an option to, if I wanted to get up and chase after them, I mean, sis would be like out of breath within like the first few steps. So yeah. it just wasn't happening. So when I was able to do that, that was a huge, like, What was your surgery weight? Like, what was your weight? So, do you remember those things? Oh, go to Instagram. We are on it. We are now back. We have mic, so sound may still have a little static in the background, but it's better than the mowing. Maxine has, well, I guess a photo to show you. I, oh, oh, I thought we, I thought you were going to turn to my weight, my my starting weight. Yeah, because you found the video. My highest weight was 286. I need to update this because it's gotta hurt my current weight is 130, but actually my current weight is 150. Ooh. My highest weight was 286 though. And I guess I just showed y'all a before picture. I guess just so you know kind of how she started. That is a kind of like where that was the pictures. And if you go to my Instagram, Precious Magnolia, then you can see my journey. And actually, you can see like my ups and downs before the surgery in terms of my weight. 
How was the pain tolerance? Do you do you think was it one of the most painful surgeries that you have thus far besides childbirth? Yes. Like what was the what was the hardest thing about that surgery? All of it. <laughs> it was very painful. And was it initially coming out of the surgery or just like after when you went home? Oh, in the hospital too. It was a lot of pain. When did it when did it start really like be like, okay, I can do this? This this is It took me what do you say? I would say three what, weeks. what do you say for the person that wants to go back to work within a week of the surgery? No, no, absolutely not, absolutely not. No, I'm, even, even work from home like gigs, no, because if your you, position it, of the well, body, if you, it, it depends on your pain tolerance. Keith was back to work in a week, mm -hmm. and I was like, how? Like my pain tolerance. It's just not there. I feel like, like I did the right decision and with the physician, he's like, if you can't take pain or you have issues with surgeries, three weeks will yes. be the recommended three, time. Three weeks. I'm thinking yes. two-ish, no, but two was I don't enough. know yet because when I had, I two did have enough. the gallbladder mm -hmm. surgery and Maxine knows. Like I'm it's glad, proper, I'm, glad, I, too. I'm glad so, I have Maxine here because that surgery for me was the worst surgery hard, I had yeah. thus far for the gallbladder. And then the, her, yeah. She was like a tyrant. She was jumping on beds, harassing me. Because you have to get up and walk. And she wasn't getting up and walking. Now, tired. now, even though it was painful, I did stick to my rules that they gave me about you have to walk every two hours or every hour or whatever it is because that's how you get better. And she ain't want to get up and walk was every it, three hours. So was, that, was that surgery similar to this surgery? Yes. Oh, yes. girl, I'm going to have to do some stuff because that I was like, this it's, isn't, I couldn't cough. No, you can't do none of that. I felt mm -hmm. like um, I felt bloated. I felt uncomfortable. So, like, I, I'm going to show y'all how I'm positioned the room because I'm trying to figure out how do I want to lower the bed during this time? Oh. Do I want to keep it high? Like, mm -hmm. all of that stuff I have to consider because I yeah. don't, I don't, even though Maxine and Keith said they would help me. Of course. And I'm having my mama come out here. Oh, then that, I don't know. I don't know how this going to be set up. And I had. You have what? I didn't have my mama come out. Let me say, okay, for anybody who's watching who has given birth, let me put this into context of how painful it was for me. So, I, and, and my pain tolerance level, I had to have an epidural when I was one centimeter open. One. That is like right when you start having contractions. I was like, give it to me now, I'm ready. And give me two of them if you can. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I in general, do not have a high tolerance for pain. So, I don't think I, I think I have a mild tolerance for pain. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. a uh, mild tolerance, no. maybe, because no, I've, I've, I've had some painful situations. Even with all that pain, hands down, I would do it again. There are very few things that do you regret pain. the surgery? Absolutely not. No. It's the best, it's the best thing. Like, it's the best thing. It's life changing. Like, I feel, I literally feel the years of my life extended and the quality of my life has improved drastically. To still got like self-esteem issues. We and, all do, yeah, that's a- You know, like, it's not a cure-all. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing my therapist, shout out to the therapist, but it made a big difference. It made a huge difference. So, yeah. Definitely improved my health on many facets. What was your initial thought when I had brought the surgery? And with that being said, think about that. When I, when Maxine had the surgery, even during the time she was going through her journey, she had never once been like, you need to get this surgery. And oh no, she was mm -hmm. so it wasn't like something that was forced upon me. Like, Maxine doesn't go around, girl, you need to get this surgery. If I oh, asked no. questions, she would say, like, you know, X, Y, and Z. If people had questions, because um, it was other people that asked her during this time, and a lot of the, the issues that people have is normally okay, is my insurance gonna cover it? I was just not, I was just at a point to where it was like, when do you want to start living today, or when you can't no more? So. Mm -hmm. No, it's no, I would never force like it's a very personal decision to a, a personal and intimate decision that one comes to in their own timing. Like, and I would never, oh god, no, I would never. What was your thought? To, 
my, my, I mean, that's just my thought. Like, I'm saying when I told you. Oh, um, <laughs> I was kind of like, hmm. Wow, okay. And the nothing, I never really brought it up. Yeah, it kind of felt like it was like, I didn't know she was, had been considering it. I never told nobody. I've been considering it for about two years. Okay, see, I didn't even know that. When I was in St. Louis, I'm like, you know, maybe I should do this. But then at that point, I had a friend who was considering it. And I didn't want to overshadow her um, journey her journey for it, like, oh, I want to do because you're doing it. I was like, mm -hmm. mm, I, because she was doing it, it did make me want to look into it more. Mm -hmm. And then when you, and even now, that one particular friend has been very much supportive and like oh, cheerleading the moment. So oh, like, shout out. People, if people now people come to me and ask my opinion, okay, well, then I will What did you think about when but I But I'm not going to be just walking around saying, hey. you, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you should think about this. Hey, you should think about that. No, like, that's too much. But what was that thought when I told you? I was kind of, like, surprised. I was, like, not surprised, but, like, I was, like, oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't, you I had I no idea that a part of me was, like, she always said she's she gonna... just talking. Like she said, when she get a car. Get yeah, a car. like, major decisions. For delightful dawn tend to take some time so Years. i i had no like i would have never guessed that it was happening this soon even yeah. when she made the decision i'm like okay so then in a couple years or something because it usually takes her time um and so i, I just didn't that. i did not expect for it to be like boom happening now boom but and, and i think i knew it was real when she started to talk about the financial planning for it and i was like oh snap she's doing it for real mm. like that part made me like not for real but she's doing it right now mm. that's all because once you put your, once you start getting your coins together oh, Lord, coin. then you for real then you for real, for real. Like, i'm like Jesus, oh shoot, this okay. coin. but I, I can see that you know this is a benefit so i feel like okay investing in this yeah it's a long time of real like it's it's life-changing and if you if you are not plus size, you really can't understand. No. If you've never so. been plus size, I don't think you can truly understand. And not that um that, oh I've been a little thick. Nah, nah. Where I've had a pudge belly. Obese. It's like obese. It's like no sis. Like yeah. If you have never been like overweight significantly, then you really can't understand. Not in my fair. opinion, in my opinion, you cannot understand like the meaning from this of this type of transformation or this decision or this or this as an option because you have never walked in my shoes what it's like to be 150 pounds plus overweight. Hmm. And that's the good thing about having the um, support system online, virtually. Yeah, because even find if somebody. you, yeah, even if you have a toxic situation, you can find that online and just build those relationships because Ooh, cold out you really need that. And even like I said, even with my situation, even though I had a strong supportive okay. family support, like um, in person support system, there was times that. I just needed to cry or because I couldn't eat and I just needed to scroll and and look at somebody. That was the that first time I ever me. heard of mukbanging. Cause it makes oh, sense. yes. That's how I got into mukbang. That's how I got into mukbang. She was sending me videos. <laughs> well, no, I wonder if she sent after I started asking for him because she was saying she was watching. She found Be Love. And I'm like, what are you talking about watching people eat? Is that a thing? I don't know anything else for me, Maxine. Anything you can think of? No. I'm excited for you. Um, I'm I'm gonna show my moral support by going on the liquid diet with you. The two days. I do when you do the clear one, I do those two days too. Uh, the clear I do clear too. I do yeah. in a full liquid. I in a full liquid. I do the full liquid with you and the clear. Oh yeah. Y'all heard it here. Yeah. It's like me shaving my head when somebody gets cancer, it's like the same thing. You've never shaved your hair. No, not me. Like, <laughs> oh. If you had cancer and you had chemo and you didn't have no hair, I would shave my hair with you. Okay. Yeah. So, because this is hard. And I, ooh, child. Like, you so lucky you don't have to do 10 days clear liquid. Shout out to everyone who was supportive. Like, 
It makes all the difference, including the booski. Mwah. Keith, I love you. Whatever the hell. <laughs> Stay unapologetically, you. Bam. We can take a picture. Okay. Take off your mic.